Welcome back to the channel everybody. So today we're actually going to be filming a video with my uncle because today on October 29th, 2017, he has been sober for one full year. So we're going to be I'm going to be asking him a little bit of his background story and how he has changed his life around. I've heard his story many of times, but we want to let the world know his story and everything about him. So let's welcome my uncle John. Everybody, this is my Uncle Johnny. Hi, everyone. Um, and I'm going to get started with the questions right now, and so you guys can know a little about him and his story. For those who don't know, can you say your name and age? Uh, my name is Juan Rodriguez. I do go by Johnny and Chavez as well. And I will be 46 November 5th. So it's coming up. It's coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about your background story? I actually am from Kenosha, Wisconsin. I do go by Chavez and J Uncle Johnny. I'm a, also a, a dad. I'll tell you about that here shortly. But I did attend Lincoln Elementary School, uh, Lincoln Middle School, and graduated from Tremper High School. I did attend the University of Wisconsin Stout. Um, to tell you a little bit about what I did in high school, um, my senior year I was elected the Tremper Trojan. Um, I was also in cross country and track and field, along with swimming. Um, I was a captain in cross country and of uh, the track and field team. I made it to state in both events. I did place in the top three um, in most of my events and in my senior year in the two mile I actually went undefeated. Um, I did end up turning down a scholarship at the University of Wisconsin Parkside but I did uh, accept one at the University of Wisconsin Stout and graduated um, with honors uh, with a hotel and restaurant management degree. In 1989 I was, I was nominated and voted the Wisconsin Hispanic Youth of the Year. So in other words, I was uh, an example uh, for the youth, the Hispanic youth here in uh, the state of Wisconsin. I do have three children, three beautiful children. Uh, my, my daughter, Olivia, and then my two little boys, Dominic and Julian. When did you start drinking and when did you know it was turning into a problem? I actually started experimenting with drinking. Um, as most college kids do, um, unfortunately, in college my freshman year. Um, I progressed, as I progressed in college, I progressed in life and drinking, um, working in restaurants. Um, not by all means, not an excuse, but it is one of the, um, a, a lot of people do drink when they work in the restaurant industry, which a lot of people, I'm sure, can agree with me. Um, and in my 20s, it, it's, it just started getting worse in my 20s, my 30s. Um, and of course led into my 40s. Um, I would say in the past 10 years um, it's, it, it exploded. Um, I lost a lot of relationships. Um, I lost a lot of jobs. Um, um, there's a lot of things that, that I lost in life because due to my in, increase in alcoholism. So what made you change your life around? Well, um, this past year, uh, October 29th, uh, 2016, a year ago from today, I actually was admitted to the hospital. I was throwing up the night before. I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of things going on. October 28th, um, I did I did go to work that day. Got home. I was throwing up again. As I mentioned, I got really ill. Um, I went drove myself to the hospital October 29th and was diagnosed with uh, some liver issues, some kidney issues. I'll go more into detail on what exactly happened with me, but I did have a strangulated umbilical hernia. What that is, is it was strangulating uh, my tube, my intestines. It was, it was wrapping them in, and cutting off the circulation. So they had to perform emergency surgery on me. Um, I ended up uh, making it through the surgery. They gave me a 30% chance of living, of surviving through that. Um, to go find out afterwards, my surgeon did tell me off the record that he honestly didn't think I was going to survive that surgery because due to my liver, condition. Um, I ended up at being staying in the hospital for the next three weeks uh, finding out that I, my, my liver did fail on me um, and my kidney uh, followed right along so I had liver and kidney failure pretty much within a week's time and one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my entire life and actually I would say possibly the worst feeling I ever had was when my doctors had told me to call my family and, and tell them that I would not be leaving the hospital. Um, I was dying um, and talk about a change in life that's when I decided to give my life to the Lord who as, as, as of today uh, most of my testimony is about that 
uh, giving my life to the Lord, my Uncle Benny, who is also my pastor at the Zion Revival Center in Zion, Illinois, um, has been a, a big, the, my biggest supporter, one of my biggest supporters among relatives that I have there, my immediate family, my children, um, my friends and my friends and family on Facebook. I, 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 I appreciate all the, all the amens and all the support that you guys have given me the past year. But um, I guess going back to that main question was what made me change my, my life around and it was being admitted to the hospital and knowing that I was dying. Um, but I was given a second chance um, and I'm definitely taking advantage of that right now. So what motivates you to stay sober still to this day? I tell you what, um, what I went through, I needed to go through and I'm, I'm very happy that God tested me and put me through what I had to go through. I would never wish all the pain that I had to go through. Um, I, I could go on and on and on about what I had to go through. Um, just a couple things, um, you know, the pain that I, had, that I had, the physical pain, the emotional pain, knowing that I was dying. Um, you know, I had, when I had my umbilical surgery, um, I had 28 stitches embedded into my stomach and my abdomen. I had five pounds of just dead gunk, dead, dead tissue taken out um, and again the pain that I went through and when I when I was when I was finally told I was uh, a, a miracle happening um, that a miracle had happened um, of course um, I wasn't I wasn't the best um, I had pretty much hit rock bottom um, I had lost my my job again um, and I say again because I did lose several uh, due to my drinking um, hit rock bottom, rock bottom financially, um, family-wise, emotional, physical, um, but praying and the support that I had, I, I continuously got better. God, you know, blessed me financially. Um, he blessed me um, health-wise. Um, I had nurses coming to see me. I had my family, my nieces and my sister uh, caring for me here uh, at the house. I mean, they, I had an in-home nurse as well, but every single day I felt myself getting stronger and I got stronger the only way I got stronger was through God um, he just I, again I'm a true miracle I'm a blessing this is the testimony I tell everybody I tell a lot of people about what I've gone through and it's really interesting when people actually want to listen sit down and actually listen to my story uh, because it's it's something that maybe maybe one of your loved ones is going through or may have to go through again I would never wish this on anybody um, my, and I would say my worst enemy, but I don't have any enemies. Um, again, living with Christ, um, having Him, His plan and His will that He has for me, um, it's it's amazing. It really is. Um, you know, being able to, you know, motivating me is is what's motivating me now even more is my children. You know, uh, I, I've, you know, I, I promised God that I would be a better father figure. I would uh, visit my children a lot more. I would pay more attention to them. Something I hadn't mentioned earlier that. Um, I had given up you know, my daughter for adoption because I knew at the time um, I was in a really bad place, um, you know, with the alcohol I was doing. Uh, that I was, I was again, I was an alcoholic, and I couldn't give her the life that I that I wanted. Um, her mother and her father um, actually gave her that life, um, but I was blessed, you know, for with for with her forgiveness and my my, my two boys as well. Um, I have seen my children this past year alone more than I've seen my children in the past five, maybe six years. Um, and I tell you what, if, if your children aren't a motivation for you, um, and God's not a motivation for you, I don't know what would be. Um, and then again, of course, knowing that I was given a second chance at life, not very many people are given that opportunity. So what are you looking forward to in the future? I tell you what, the future is right now living in the present, living for today. Because as everybody knows, and it does say it in the Bible, tomorrow's never promised, guys. It really isn't. Um, I tell everybody that I love them every single day. I don't go to sleep mad. Um, I look forward to, to seeing my children more and more and more, being able to do things with them. Um, you know, I guess to reiterate also that, you know, I, I am disabled, unfortunately. Um, I am not 100% by all means. I have, I have been in hospital three or four times now since months, since last year, um, unfortunately due to some illness that persisting, continue, persisting to my liver and my kidneys, but also I've got other things that have been happening. Um, but I tell you what, I'm able to go outside and work on my garden, I'm able to cut the grass, I'm, 
I'm able to walk my dog, uh, spend time with him. I mean, a lot of people, if you have a dog, if you have a dog, you know what I'm talking about. It's a personal relationship with their dogs. They're, they're not dogs, they're not a pet, they're part of the family. Um, being able to drive down and see my children um, is a blessing in itself. Um, you know, I, I was able to, you know, the Lord blessed me with a, with, with a new truck. Uh, I have no, I have no more car payments. You know, when I, and we go back to financial success, the financial blessings. That was one blessing. That's one blessing out of many that we we could go on and on and on about those. Um, spending time with my family and doing things for my mother. Um, I'm also going to start doing some volunteer work, giving back to the community, not just to the community, but to our servicemen. Uh, I know you, a lot of you have people that are in the service, and thank you for your service, by the way, if you have family members or if you yourself have served. Um, I'm actually just signed up today, going to start within the next week or two. Um, I'm going to North Chicago to volunteer with, it's a program called No Veteran Dies Alone. What that is, is I actually am in that room. I am going to be either reading or silent or just doing something with that veteran that is actually on their on their last couple of days, um, whether they're because their family can't be there or they may not have family. They don't have anybody visiting them. Um, I will be the one holding their hand when they uh, when they take their last breath. Um, and again, it's the least I can do, given that God has given me a second chance uh, to do what I wanted to do, doing to do what I want to do. And give back to whoever I possibly can. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Me? Anything else? Um, I'm just gonna tell you real quick. If there's anybody out there, whether it's you yourself, whether it's a loved one you have that is struggling with alcoholism, um, I'm available. Again, I want to give back because what God has done for me, um, it doesn't have to be about religion. It can be about you know. It can be a, I, you know. I got over drugs as well. I was you know. That's something I hadn't mentioned earlier. I was doing drugs and alcohol. Um, it does again. It doesn't have to be necessarily about religion, but God was the one that got me to. He, he is the one that got me to where I am today. So, if you need a friend um, that, and you want to contact me, um, I am under on my Facebook page. It's under Johnny J O H N N Y Chavez C H A V E Z Rodriguez R O D R I G U E Z. Or you can contact me on my cell phone. Give send me off a text. My number is 815-931-8879, or you can email me. It's under Julian Chavez Rodriguez, J-U-L-I-A-N-C-H-A-B-E-Z, R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z, at hotmail.com. Again, we can keep this between us. Um, I, I really want to do what I can to help anyone out there because, again, I've been given this opportunity, a, a, a new life. And if that's something that you that you need or someone else does that you know of, you know, have them contact me. I'd be more than happy to sit down. I'd even travel to, you know, if, if it's not too far of a travel, to meet up with them. Again, this can all be kept um, anonymous. Uh, and again, within this past year, my life has changed for the better. Um, I'm here, I'm willing to help you if that's what you want. Again, you've got to be willing to put forth that effort. Um, and I tell you what, you can only live for today because tomorrow is never promised, guys. And as I always say, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Uh, so please, again, thank you very much for uh, watching this. And I guess maybe I can say this for my niece also. She's got a YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Uh, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. And God bless you all. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. Give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks a lot and God bless.